Hey, Steve here. Today I'm showing you a bit of an advanced Photoshop technique that will help you intensify a photo taken around sunrise or sunset in the golden hour, but in a way that's easy for even beginners to follow along with. So the technique involves using luminosity masks in Photoshop. So if you're new to that and you want to learn more, then after you watch this video, you can download my guide and introduction to luminosity masking for free using the link below the video in the description. If you're new to my channel and you want to see more videos like this, then remember to hit that subscribe button also down below. So this is a great way to enhance the natural sunlight colors in a scene without going over the top with them while making those colors pop in your landscapes. So let me show you how it's done. So the first step in this technique is to come into your channels panel in Photoshop. And on a Mac, you're going to hold command on the keyboard on a PC, that would be control. And you're going to click the RGB channel once and then you come over into the layers panel we're going to add a new adjustment layer and then we're going to pick from this drop down or drop up list uh, solid color and so what that's going to do is create a solid color adjustment layer but with the luminosity mask applied in the uh, in the layer mask automatically because of what you did in the channels panel just now so from here, what we're going to do is, um, well, first let's pull the brightness up so that we're actually looking at some colors over here in the color picker. And you want to pick a color that's kind of orangey um, up in this top left corner, not too far into the reds and not too far into the yellows. So, you know, roughly around about here is probably going to do well. Uh, you can come and adjust this later. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect from the start. Uh, but let me click OK on that. And now obviously all we've done here is just paint this color into the image, uh, into the highlights because of the luminosity mask. Uh, so to actually blend this in and make it look halfway normal, we're just going to change the blend mode to either overlay or soft light, depending on the image. Try both. Um, for this one, soft light is probably a bit more appropriate. So again, depending on how many uh, or how much of your image is in the shadows compared to you know, in the highlights, this might be all you need to do. Uh, however, it's probably a bit too orangey in the uh, foreground here. So if we just do the before and after on this, if I just disable and re-enable the layer, you can see you know, the, the sky is taken on a nice you know, orange uh, tint from that color, but also all the grays in this foreground here have, uh, have taken on probably too much for my liking. So there's a few ways to blend this in and, uh, and, and remove it. Um, the first is just to simply uh, reduce the opacity of the layer. However, in doing that, we have reduced it, uh, its effect from the foreground, but it's also reduced it from the sky as well. That might be okay because maybe you want to be a slightly a uh, little bit more subtle in the sky with this effect. But let's assume that you want the effect in full in the sky and you just want to remove it from the foreground. Well, a good way to do that is to further edit the layer mask. So let me just show you what the layer mask looks like. So we're getting into the realms of luminosity masking here, but hopefully uh, you can follow along anyway. Um, I'm going to press on the keyboard Alt or Option and then click on the layer mask and that's going to bring it into view. Now what we want to do to remove this effect from the shadows in the image, we need to make those shadows in the mask appear darker than they are right now without affecting the, uh, the highlights. So one way that you can do that, among others, I mean there's millions of ways to do pretty much everything in Photoshop, but one quick and easy way to do this would be to go to image adjustments and levels so this is different to the levels adjustment layer because it's uh, it's actually going to affect the layer mask that we're currently looking at uh, and then anyway what you can do is simply tweak these values here on this slider to increase the contrast of the layer mask and thereby make shadows more black um, and yeah basically you can just experiment with this until you get to the point where 
you've uh, you've eliminated this effect from the areas that you want to eliminate it from whilst keeping it in the areas you want to keep it in uh, so let me cancel this now so yeah essentially what you're looking for is to make the shadows darker if you want to remove it from the shadows let me cancel this and I'll show you what that looks like so you can still do the same thing but with this actual main image in view it's probably a bit more useful doing it this way I just wanted to show you the effect on the layer mask and why it's working this way first uh, so with the full image in view now if we click on the layer mask and run that uh, levels adjustment we can see here as I drag this black point up we're actually removing the effect from the darker parts of the shot i.e. the shadows and you can see that reflected over here in the layer mask it's a bit harder to see because it's a lot smaller but I think it's probably more useful to see the effect on the image as you're as you're making this adjustment so really this just becomes a slider for uh, you know how much you want to remove the effect from the shadows and then here if you want to sort of you know just tweak it a little bit more then these can uh, you know you can play around with these but this black point slider is really where you're going to see most of the uh, benefit all right so with that done let me click ok and toggle this off and on and we can see this is now only in the highlights which just happens to be mainly in the sky which kind of makes sense at sunrise and there we have it that is the technique so yeah hopefully you found this useful and yeah i'd recommend experimenting with where you put this in your workflow um, if you start to sort of introduce color towards the beginning of the workflow then you don't need to add as much because the your further edits are going to sort of enhance that color and saturation even more um, as you're as you're increasing the the contrast in your image in the later steps of your workflow um, if you're using this towards the end of your workflow then yeah it's going to be kind of more of a what you see is what you get effect so you're going to add the exact amount that you need uh, you know when you're sort of close to finishing your image and so with that said just another reminder about my uh, workflow guide if you want to download that for free then i'll put a link in the video description otherwise thanks for watching i hope you found this video useful i'll see you next time